It's a badass car, boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> Two fuel pumps. And that's what the PSI does. I, I regulate the amount of fuel mm -hmm. on the pumps. You know, I do yep. a burnout on one pump. Then when you're ready to go, you pull it back right here. And this here, pull that back. It's a go. It's a go. Hey, it's Wayne Carini from Talking Classic Cars, and I'm here at the Savoy Museum in Cartersville, Georgia, and I'm here with somebody I've admired almost my whole life. I mean, you know, when, I started, you. when I started watching drag racing, I, I hung out at Connecticut Dragway a lot, and it was, it was a wonderful thing to, to see somebody like you do so well. Um, you know, it's, it's always fun to, to see people succeed, but but somebody that never they never thought you would succeed yes. and look at what you did you, yes. you you broke the barrier and made sure that you you kept going so Shirley Maldani is here with us thank you for all and, that. and 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 boy what a thrill when you walked in the door today and I was standing here and you the first thing you did is you bolted to that car and you jumped right in yes. I couldn't do that yeah. I couldn't even fit in there and I'm not that big, but you yeah. have to have you have to have a way of getting in. I saw you get in. Yes, you have to know how to do it. That's of right. course, the car is built for me, so it's rather easy. But uh, before my knee replacements, I I was able to enter the race car and, and, and exit the race car a whole lot easier. So we we watched the video today of of, of your life, and it was this the, it was really it was it was my eyes watered up several times, but. Uh, but it's a really great story of your life. And, and if somebody were to tell me about 20 years ago that I'd be sitting here talking to you, I'd say you were crazy, really? but yeah, absolutely. Not absolutely. that hard to find. Well, but um, how many Wallys? And, and, and to explain to people, Wally is it's the ultimate, it's, yeah. it's the trophy, the but you have trophy. to earn it. You certainly oh, have yeah. to earn it. Oh, yeah. It's not like a, a committee choosing that your car is better than Joe's. You have to earn that. Yeah, you go out and it's a series of eliminations, um, you know, one against the other. Uh, they start out with the quickest 16 for qualifying, and then comes Sunday, that's race day. 16 cars, one round, you now have eight. Yep. Then you have four. It's not like you can come back again. You're, you're no, one no. and done. No, that's right, yes. One and done. There is no sandbagging on the back stretch. Right. And uh, you, you get beach, you're, you're out, you're that's in the trailer playing cards. That's what we used to <laughs> play cards. But uh, uh, yeah, the, the sport, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a lesson in learning how to be ready not to jump the gun, but how to be ready for uh, probably the, the ride of your life. You know, we watch the NHRA on television now, and you see these huge teams with all these sponsors and all this money. That wasn't you. When you got into this, it was by the seat of your pants. Yeah, well, that's what drove me out of the sport, the cost of it. Yeah. And I'd probably still be in, probably as a car owner. Uh, but it's just they turned it into a money pit, I must say. And uh, it doesn't delight me, but uh, these uh, these crew chiefs who tend to think they're the stars, uh, and some of them are. Yeah. Take that away from them, but uh, the crew members work a whole lot harder than the crew chiefs do. Right. They shout orders, and everybody runs and hides. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, the way it is today, it's uh, again. Money, a money pit, and okay. uh, you don't go with uh, a, a spare slug. Couples, you don't tear it apart between rounds. They just put another, as you, they say, bullet in the in the, in the chassis, and uh, they've turned it into a you know a, a, a rich kid sport. Yeah. yeah. And the little the little guy that used to be able to look at it and see visions of a hey, I could. I could do this if I had the, you know, the, yep. my dad helped me build my hot rod. I could go out and, you know, there's a class for every car. It's not that way any longer. But what really intrigues me about you is just that you've, you've had this drive, and, and there's so many things involved, time management. I mean, you have to make sure that you're at the event. You have to make sure you make the round. You have to make sure the car's ready for when the round comes around and you're in it. I mean, there's so many things involved. And you were doing it almost on your own. You had your son with you, but yet it was a small team. A small team. Well, uh, three guys, 
and yours truly. And they would, uh, I, I went with the car most of the yeah, time. Yeah, so you would ride in the truck. I, I rode the, you know, the right seat for a lot of years. Yeah. And uh, I, I enjoyed that. Yeah. At the time, I enjoyed it, but uh, it's, it's now, you know, uh, they fly in with their first class boarding pass and their one hand, a helmet in the other, and, you know, steer me in the right place. Yeah. Uh, the drivers today have no idea. Yeah. What it took to build the sport to where it is today. Yeah, but but you hit it, I think, just at the sweet spot. It was really the sweet spot, the 70s and 80s. I think that that was when television was sort of just starting to pay attention mm -hmm. to what mm -hmm. was going on in the sport, and it was it was something a lot of people couldn't wrap their head around how you were so intrigued to see a car go. For Driving just a, a very, line. very I, few yes. seconds and yes. go 300 miles an hour. Yes. But if what you have to do is you have to go to the track and you have to watch one. You, you can see all you can see on television. But if you haven't seen it live, yeah. you haven't seen anything. You've got to see it live. These cars are spectacular. The fuel cars. The fuel meaning nitromethane. Right. And, you know, I haven't been in probably 25 or 30 Shame years. On you. I know, I know. When I used to go, it was the coolest thing to sit, you know, within 20 feet of the cars as they're revving the motor. And it's, the sound is one thing, but the vibrations as they pound your chest. Yeah, well, they. The sound waves. Yeah, you're talking like today, 10,000 horsepower. Yeah. And That's, you were driving cars with how many horsepower? Uh, about eight. 8 about 8,000 horsepower. Yeah. And I, I, I uh, stopped in 03, and w what they do, they just, uh, they add more nitro to the tank, percentage-wise, and a cubic inch always stays the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, they put some limits on what used to be unlimited fuel dragster. Love oh, the sound of that, it's mm. beautiful. Now, it has to be so far off the ground, uh, so long, just so long, the the uh, we're all uh, relegated to that uh, uh, that rear gear, which I feel is too low. Mm -hmm. It taxes the motor, mm -hmm. and it just RPMs the hell out of that car coming down through the lights. And uh, there's some changes that I would love to see made that would lower the cost of the sport. Well, that's that's a key. for the little guy. Yeah, yeah. So what what? What is the engine running in, in RPMs when you go through the lights? I have no, I don't really know. Probably 15,000, 16,000 RPMs. I don't really RPM, yeah. know what the what the. When RPM you sat in the car is. today, you said two gauges, that's it. I have, they, you know, I had two gauges. Oil pressure gauge, which is the, that's the x-ray of what's happening inside that engine. Mm -hmm. And uh, a PSI gauge. And that what that does that tells you fuel pressure, mm -hmm. and you want a certain pressure with the for the burnout, certain pressure for backing up at an idle, mm -hmm. and then pull on the fuel, both pumps for the go. Yeah. And uh, uh, we do have two fuel pumps and do a burnout on only one in high gear, and to keep the RPMs down. Now they have a throttle stop which the driver gets in and just buries the throttle to the floor and it can go just so far because they have a throttle stop gotcha. on it. So that, you know, it's not we don't the motor. cultivate any new drivers that have a good sound and feel for it. Yeah. I, then and now, I'm nothing but a sound and feel driver yeah. and that's the only thing I know. I can go out there and I can do a burnout with the sound. I, and I, the feel of it, and uh, without a throttle stop. Most of your drivers out there today could not do that. When I was going to drag races years ago, there'd be a group of guys that would come to down. So there would be Perdome, and you, and, and uh, Connie, and, mm -hmm. and Big, Big and, and a bunch of people, and it was like a show that went around the country. <laughs> yes. You know, it was, it was wonderful to be able to see all you guys in one spot. That was so the, cool. The biggies, yes, yeah. the big ones. And uh, the fans could get close to us. The fans loved the cars back then, but they were skinned to death of them. And yeah. they would need be uh, very, very strong cars. Um, they are, uh, you're, you're fixing to have a problem once you fire that thing up. Mm. And uh, it's just, 
if you lean on it hard, lean on it hard, um, it, it's going to talk back. Yeah. And uh, you can't give it too much because they, you know, they're prone to breakage, and breakage means nitrated oil out on hot exhaust, mm -hmm. fire. Right, and, you, and you've had your share of oh, those things. Oh, yeah, I yeah. sat behind it for a number of years, <laughs> then, three years in the funny car, and I just got kind tired of tired of getting of, burned. Ooh, <laughs> get, get, getting lit up, you know, I got tired of it. Yeah, and, and you know, you were talking about feel, and, and that maybe is a little bit something that some of the new drivers don't actually have. I mean, it's... No, the, they don't. So, for instance, when you get too much power to the engine, and then all yeah. of a sudden the tires break loose, Exactly. You know, so you got to have that feel. What's the right amount to get the job done? Yes. But yet not exactly. get in trouble. Exactly. You just said it. Yeah. And you, it, you know, it goes out there, and then finally, somewhere downwind, you're going to get it one to one, and that's what you want. Right. Um, they have to tune these cars to the point where it is. Uh, uh, you know, they don't overpower the racetrack because then we overpower. You turn the tires. You, you <laughs> spin the tires, the competition is gone. Right. You chatter them a little bit well, at the line or even eight, even a quarter of <laughs> the way down, you break them loose and yes, that's well, it, the end of the race. The competition has won the, that's right. the that, drag race. That's right. So it's all about getting a happy medium out there. And these crew members are very sharp. Uh, a lot of the crew chiefs are very good they at it. They know how to medium. dial it in. They are very good yeah. at what they, and then we have some phonies out there, some fakers, and they're drawing these big salaries and they can't hit their ass with both hands, excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> that's all right. But, but you know, it was, it was all of that, that's what you had, and, and, and it was a little bit of head games going on, you know, with oh, Connie, sure. with Don. Yep. You know, it was that head game thing, and with, with, your, uh, with the dragster painted pink, they couldn't <laughs> miss you. Well, yeah, right, you know, it goes without saying. <laughs> They'd look over and glance over and go, oh, no, not her again. Yeah, not her again. <laughs> yes, you just said it. That's great. That's yes. great. Pleasure to meet you. Oh, it was my pleasure. Trust thank me. you so much for talking yes, with sir. us. And thank you. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing the video this coming Wednesday in FS1. Yes. Yeah, and it'll maybe. be out there for many years. Years to come. Yes. Thank thanks to Fox Sports. That's right. Well yeah. thank you. Thankful for that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Handbrake. Greatness. Look at that. It's a badass car, boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> wow. And I insisted on the button. Yep. Turn hit. Not flip. Because those flips come unflipped, and I've seen it happen. Uh -huh. That's, that's, yeah. that's yeah. what drives the whole car, yes. that shaft. Yep. That's unbelievable. Wow. Uh -huh. unbelievable. Of course, this is a spill tank, NHRA, it's a requirement. It's yeah. an ugly son of a gun. Yeah, that's okay. But it uh, it's, uh, keeps the track. Uh -huh. Oh, the only thing I used to wonder about, you don't ever want to lose that thing. That <laughs> speed. Because it'll drive you. Everything will where twist around. To, where, where it wants to go. Yeah, yeah. It's the boss thing. And, but and I've always said, these cars are boss. The most important thing in the whole car probably is, is who packs your shoe. Yeah, I pack the shoes. That's right, because you want to make sure it's not. Yes, I, I pack the shoes. And this is for, you know, over, right, overflow. So everybody's going to feed And this, this is the. That's a ballistic. That's right, that's if bag. the blower blows up. That's right. It's not it gonna. Keep, it's keeps gonna. Keeps the pieces. Right. And and this, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, this was the car. This is was the last ride I took. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much.